One thing that makes elimination reactions much more complicated than substitution reactions is the fact that there are almost always are multiple regioisomers of products possible, which is to say in a substitution reaction, you know that you're either going to end up where the leaving group was, or there's going to be some carbocation rearrangement. However, as soon as you have a base instead of a non-basic nucleophile around, the possibility arises of doing elimination at the beta position. And again, the alpha position is where the bromine itself is bound. So that means that the beta position is over on this side and on that side, which means that inherently there's two possible places that we need to consider for elimination purposes. There's a hydrogen or several hydrogens, in fact, on this particular carbon. Likewise, there's a hydrogen on this particular carbon, and it's these beta hydrogens that can be the ones to eliminate. Bearing in mind, of course, that they both can orient in such a way as to be anti-periplanar to that bromine, we could have a elimination on either side. So the question is, what role does the base play in this? And also the question is, which, which system would be preferred? Where would the elimination be preferred? So now let's go ahead and draw both possible products. So I'm going to imagine that the hydroxide, again, it's going to be the minus parts of this molecule is going to be the base. The hydroxide in principle could come and deprotonate at this position and cause the electron density to flow there and the bromide to leave. Alternatively, the hydroxide could come in to one of these hydrogens, cause the electron density to flow that way and bromine to leave. The red structure is going to have a double bond between this carbon and where the leaving group was. In other words, it's going to have a tri-substituted double bond. Meanwhile, the blue structure is going to have a double bond between the bromine and the methyl, which is to say it's going to be a terminal monosubstituted double bond. In terms of which product is kinetically favored or thermodynamically favored, then things become quite a bit more complex. But if we're trying to decide which of these is the more stable product, this is the most stable possible double bond that could be formed from this structure. And a Russian guy back in the day when E2 eliminations were being worked out realized that almost always with small bases, you try to form the more thermodynamically favored product. In fact, that tries to happen also with larger bases, but the Zaitsev product is going to be the most stable double bond that you can form thermodynamically. And all things being equal, if you have a smaller, milder base, it will go ahead and deprotonate in such a way as to lead to that. So this is going to be the thermodynamically more stable product. This is going to be the less stable product, and it can form under certain, certain circumstances. For example, LDA. What is LDA? This is something you will simply need to know, so memorize this. It's lithium diisopropyl amide. In other words, it looks like this. The lithium is a plus. The diisopropyl amide is this piece down here. Now, what is the pKa of a deprotonated amine? On um, The pKa here is about 35 or so. In practice, the pKa for LDA itself is probably more like 40, 42, but for a general amine, we would say 35. So 35 is not a bad ballpark rule. What's the pKa for hydroxide? Well, it's essentially that of water, so the pKa here is about 16. Said another way, this is dramatically stronger as a base, almost 10 to the 20th stronger as a base than hydroxide. But hydroxide is tiny, so it is a mild base, but it is small. It is easily able to get into these nooks and crannies and abstract the proton that will lead to the most stable thing. This is an enormous base, and it's also indiscriminate. It will simply remove whatever uh, proton it encounters first, as long as that proton can be lined up in some way to give rise to the product. Said another way, this is going to exert a very strong kinetic preference for the blue hydrogens. If you use LDA, you're almost certainly going to form what we call the Hoffman product, which is the less stable product. But because of the size and strength of this base, this is going to be the kinetic product. This is going to be the product that forms fastest by far. Whereas if you allow the relatively milder hydroxide to come in, it will search for essentially the thermodynamic most stable product. In principle, of course, this uh, relatively large base could happen to abstract that proton and lead to the more stable thermodynamic product. In practice, however, it's so congested that this never happens. This energy of the transition state is raised high enough that it essentially never happens. And that's really what Professor Pelkey's transition state handout is walking through. So we're going to zoom in on that in a little bit more detail. Here we have an interesting description of Zaitsev versus Hoffman in the context of reaction coordinate diagrams. And this is from the Pelkey handout. And the idea really is that if you have a single starting material and react with an unhindered base versus a hindered base, you're going to favor different products. One claim that Pelkey advances is that 
that E2 regioselectivity is under kinetic control. And what he means by that is you're always going to go through the lowest possible transition state on the way to the products. And the idea is that you're going to end up making the more substituted double bond, the Zaitsev product, if you use small bases, whereas the larger the base, the more likely you go to the Hoffman, the less favored double bond product. Why? Because it's kinetically easier. It's easier to get there. So the idea is if you have a relatively hindered proton that you're trying to get to, a relatively hindered beta hydrogen that you're trying to get to to eliminate, then the transition state along the way is going to be influenced by the sterics of the base. The smaller the base, the lower the energy of that particular transition state. The larger the base, the higher the energy of this transition state. Said another way, this blue line is going to be dramatically affected by the size of the base. And in a relatively small base, that blue line is going to be low. And this is the line that leads to the Zaitsev product, which is the thermodynamic one. However, if you have a hindered base, the size of that line, the height of that line gets dramatically higher. You're still leading to the same good lower energy thermodynamic product, but unfortunately it becomes kinetically inaccessible. You have to go over too high a hump. By contrast, transition state two, access to the kinetic product, is going to be unaffected by the size of the base. It doesn't matter if you have a small, like hydroxide, base. There's a certain energy cost associated with doing that deprotonation. If you use a much larger base, it doesn't matter because this hydrogen is accessible. It's sticking out. The large base can abstract it just fine. So transition state two is unaffected by the size of the base, whereas transition state one is affected very greatly by the size of the base. Transition state one, with a small base, leads to the better product. However, with a larger base, it's much higher in energy, and even though it leads to the better product, you can't get there. You're kinetically forced to take the lower energy pathway, the Hoffman product. So for the purposes of synthesis and predict the products, the answer is simple. The smaller the base, the more likely you are to find your way to the best possible alkene. The larger the base, the more likely you are to be trapped by kinetic considerations, attacking the less substituted hydrogen, leading to the less substituted double bond. Hoffman products are very often due to only being able to get at the kinetic product. Zaitsev products are better overall. They're lower energy overall, but in order to get there, you have to attack a relatively hindered spot. Small, relatively mild bases allow you to do that. Larger, relatively hindered, relatively stronger bases will always lead instead to the Hoffman product instead because the Zaitsev product is just too hard to get to.